Richmond sensation Shaheen Holloway loved his first ever game against the Pitt Panthers, but Holloway and the Pirates kept their coach George Blaney busy the entire game until a last second buzzer beater gave the Pirates the win. This afternoon, Pittsburgh coach Ralph Willard looks to avenge that defeat with the Big East top long range shooter Jason Mayle. Two of the Big East best backcourts ready to battle. It's Pittsburgh against Seton Hall next on Creative Sports. presents Big East Conference Basketball. This afternoon from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, it's the Pirates of Seton Hall University against the University of Pittsburgh Panthers. Good afternoon, everybody. We welcome you to Pittsburgh. I'm Tony Caridi along with Ronnie Perry. It's been tough going of late for the Seton Hall Pirates. They've lost eight out of their last ten. However, anytime they take the floor, something special can happen because they've got one of the more talented performers in the Big East in the backcourt, Ronnie and Shaheen Holloway. Well, he's having a dynamite freshman year for George Blaney's club. He leads the Big East in assists. He leads the team in scoring. He's also a dynamite man stealing the basketball. In short, he makes the Pirates go. And when you put him together with his backcourt mate, Lavelle Sanders, you got the top scoring backcourt in the Big East. They've got to get it going. They've got to shoot the ball well. And then they've got to rely on their big people to get some rebounds inside. Well, like Seton Hall, Pittsburgh relies on its backcourt. They go with three guards in the starting rotation, led by the long-distance king of the Big East and Jason Mayle. Yeah, Jason Mayle can really get the hot hand. He's shot the ball well. He not only makes the threes, he's very accurate from three-point land. At Notre Dame recently made five threes, five trips down the court. Ralph Willard hopes he can get that hot hand. Fontigo Cummings also very quick in the backcourt, leads the team in scoring. Kelly Taylor loves to steal the ball, makes the team go. Great backcourt matchup today. The rebounding will be very key. All right, the Hall looking for a season sweep. Pitt looks to avenge an earlier loss. We'll have the opening tip when we return to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Today's Big East telecast is brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. And by Pizza Hut, making it great again and again. Everyone loves to shoot the basketball, but there's only one right way. That's why former NBA All-Star and NCAA coach Jeff Mullins is introducing the right way basketball, the ball with a built-in coach. For the first time ever, you can own this complete 10-step shooting program. It includes a durable patented basketball, the Jeff Mullins Secrets of Shooting video, and a 10-step shooting poster, all for only $34.95. Coach Mullins guides you through a complete 10-step program of fundamentals you can follow in the comfort of your own home. With this program, you'll learn proven techniques that are sure to make you a better shooter. The right way basketball teaches and shows you how to get in this position before you shoot each and every time. Now you can have a complete right way shooting program for $34.95. No young player or coach should be without a right way basketball. So why wait? Just call 1-800-425-0811 to order yours today. He saw. The man's a thief who witnessed a murder. One man knows the truth. He's a burglar. Who's going to believe him? One man holds the key. You know who did it, don't you? So will you. The most powerful man in the world has just met his match. If you make a mistake. Then what? Then I kill him. Clint Eastwood. That's entirely unacceptable. Absolute power. Rated R. Opens everywhere Friday. I think real estate would be highly lucrative. Now there's a computer that puts you in touch with the world like never before. Your vote. One. At the touch of a button, you get TV, FM stereo, even a digital answering machine. Hey, Doug, this is Donald Trump. Just got your email. The Toshiba Infinia with the Intel Pentium processor. When you're ready for a different computer. From the people who brought you one clever idea after another comes the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Right now, you can get a Plymouth Voyager Plus this great limited time lease offer for only $2.49 a month. You get air conditioning, seven passenger seating, and more. And you get it for only $2.49 a month. Don't miss the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Another clever way to save. And it's only at your Plymouth dealer. 
We welcome you back inside Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Tony Caridi along with Ron Perry getting set for the Pitt Panthers and the Pirates of Seton Hall University. Starting five for George Blaney's squad. Danelle Williams, the key man this afternoon. The front line of the Pirates has been banged up. Williams needs to come up big. Joined up front by Tatey Jordan in the backcourt, Holloway and Sanders. George Blaney, his third season at Seton Hall, his 30th season as a head coach. 36 and 42 overall at Seton Hall. For the University of Pittsburgh, the starting five in the middle, the seven footer Mark Blount, the three guards in Mayall, Cummings, and Taylor, and Chad Varga at the one forward spot for Pittsburgh. The head coach of the Pitt Panthers, like George Blaney, a Holy Cross graduate, is Ralph Willard, and like George Blaney, in his third season at his respective school, the Panthers come into today's game at 11 and 11 overall. This will be the 32nd meeting between the two schools this season, as we had talked about earlier, 53-51. The Hall won it at the buzzer, that game at Continental Airlines Arena. Big win for Seton Hall in that game, and on the road, especially in Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, where Pitt can be very, very tough. Pitt in a man-to-man. -man. Seton Hall needs to get off to a good start on the road. Pirates control the game's opening tip. Out front, this is Dwayne Jordan. And away from the ball, a whistle, contact, and a foul call. It will go against Pittsburgh immediately right there. They'll call that against Jason Mell. You saw a mismatch. Donnell Williams is 6'7", Ronnie. Mell at 6'4". He was trying to get a little position there. Yeah, that would have been a good look inside if the Hall would have been able to find Williams. Williams, a guy that can get hot, misses that one. But if he can hit a few early, a big plus for the Pirates. Panthers in transition. Cummings to Varga for the game's first two. Beautiful give and go right there. That's the way you want to run the fast break. And immediately, Pitt showing some three-quarter court pressure. Chad Varga, who scores the game's first points, did not play in the first meeting between these two schools because of an injury. Bayonne Tatey shot not there, and a rebound out to Mark Blunt. Up-tempo is the way Pitt likes to play it. Nice defensive work that time. Hustling after the basketball was Dwayne Jordan, intended for Varga, and the Panthers will control. Very important for both clubs with their backcourts that they get a couple of shots to go from the perimeter early to try to loosen things up inside. And neither team has been shooting the ball well of late. Uh, Pitt had just a horrible shooting performance uh, earlier this week when they lost down at Miami for the game. They were 0 of 7 in the second half from three-point range. They shot just 13 percent from beyond the three-point arc in that game, and that's just not going to be successful for a Pitt team that relies on the long-range shot. Montego Cummings, his first two. He led the Panthers with 24 points in that loss at Miami earlier this week. Panthers on top four zip. Always nice when you can get your first couple of shots to go, as Pitt is done in this game. Here's Lavelle Sanders. Strong move to the basket. Oh. Count it and the foul. What a great one-on-one -on -one move there. Lavelle Sanders going up against the seven-footer, Mark Blount. Well, you'd always like to penetrate against pressure. Three-quarter court pressure in Sanders. We talked about the Seton Hall backcourt with a fine penetration here. The key is that he gets between Mail and Blount, able to get a step on him, and that was a beautiful finish. He's fortunate just to get that ball towards the basket there with Blount, a seven-footer, and one of the top shot blockers in the Big East. So the Hall on the board, 4-3 early on here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. These two teams have played 13 times here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Pitt has won nine. The Hall has left victorious on four occasions. And away from the ball, a foul call against Pitt. Charge that one to Vontigo Cummings. It will be the third team foul against Pittsburgh. pressure both of these teams because they do handle the ball well. Sanders, and we've talked about Holloway, the dynamite freshman, with the ball right now for the Pirates. Nice dish back to Lavelle Sanders. Tipped out of bounds off of Holloway, and Pittsburgh will take the possession. It's an excellent matchup, isn't it, in this game with Kelly Taylor and Shaheen Holloway? Two fine young backcourt players going right at it, head-to-head -head early in this one. Mark Blount's going to take an early seat. Gerald Jordan has come on for Pittsburgh. 4-3, Pitt on top, two minutes gone by. Pirates in a man-to-man -man set. Kelly Taylor with the ball, a talented freshman for the Panthers. He has really, though, struggled with his shot in the last two games. Just one of 19 from the field. Too tight of a defensive coverage that time by Shaheen Holloway, and he'll pick up his first. Defense starts with your backcourt people, and Holloway and Sanders right now really extending and putting pressure on the Pitt Panther backcourt. Really 
really disrupt an offense if you get right in the face of the backcourt and make it tough for the passing lanes. Montego going to let it fly from three-point range, and the Hall has the advantage down the floor. Convenient hop, though, goes back to the Big East Steel's leader, Kelly Taylor. Mail with a good look. Gerald Jordan can't get the offensive rebound put back. And finally, it's yanked out of there by Dwayne Jordan. Seton Hall cannot allow Pitt to get second and third chances in this one. Holloway's shaking. Can't get the roll. Back comes Kelly Taylor. He'll take it all the way in. And Taylor, who's just one of 19 in the last two games, finally gets one to fall early. That's a key for him. And to get it to the goal, Tony, when you haven't been shooting well is a smart move. If you miss, you can always get yourself to the foul line. We've been talking about the backcourt of Seton Hall. This is Sanders, who can play both the off guard and the point guard. He'll take it towards the basket. And a double dribble will give the ball back over to Pittsburgh. That's the third turnover against the Pirates. A little bit surprised early that Holloway's not handling the ball more for George Blaney's club. I think they're trying to free him up on the wing, but look for him to handle the ball more. Four turnovers so far through the first three and a half minutes of this game. Pitt leads 6-3. drawing a defensive assignment on Cummings. This is Kelly Taylor's a mismatch here. Jordan popped out to watch him. Taylor again goes to the goal. Gerald Jordan, his second offensive rebound. This time he converts. Neither of these teams has really been controlling the backboards lately, and those are those second chance conversions that I just talked about. Nice job by Jordan. Gerald Jordan saw just eight minutes of playing time. Earlier this week in the loss at Miami, he is out there very early this afternoon with Mark Brown on the bench with two quick fouls. Off the screen, Lavelle Sanders strokes it. That's a three. Sanders with his 46th three-pointer on the season. He is second on this Seton Hall team in three-point shooting. Only Holloway is the man on top of him with 52 points. Look at how far Pitt is right now, out setting up this offense. You've got to get some penetration to free up your big people inside. Jordan works against Tatey, and they'll call a traveling violation against Gerald Jordan as he shuffles his feet. Early on here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, it's a tight one. The Pitt Panthers with a two-point lead, 15-15 to play in the half. Pizza Hut employee memo number five, a word about napkins. It stands to reason that if you create a pepperoni that has less grease per piece of pepperoni, you're going to need less napkins. So, less napkins it is. On the other hand, if you put more pepperoni on the pizza, you might need more napkins. Which means, after some serious deliberation, we recommend the same amount of napkins. Okay, can we consider the napkin question put to rest? Now we can go on to placemats. You're on placemats. So feel free to let everyone know we're making it great again and again. Where could the Bell Atlantic b to b be? Well, the b to b could be by the computer for its thousands of northern New Jersey sales and service centers. Or the b to b could be by the supply closet for its endless lists of new suppliers. But the b to b better be by the boss because it now has a unique info guide stocked with great tips on how to grow your business. The Bell Atlantic b to b For your business today and your business to be. Bell Atlantic, the heart of communication. And you, we've got uh, two of the more talented backcourts in the Big East in action here today, and there's Lavelle Sanders showing you why. Sanders, Holloway, Dynamite. Sanders with all six of Seton Hall's points already in this game, and he's really stepped it up to help them to get out of the blocks. Lavelle was very active in the first meeting between these two teams back in December. He had a season high and career best 11 rebounds against the Panthers. Right now, he's doing it with his offense. Sanders again draws a crowd. Look at that dish from Holloway. 
Good defensive job there, though, on Sanders as the Panthers converge with a double tip. By the way, it makes you a little nervous when your backcourt people lead you in game three by. You want your big people getting it done. How many times have you seen that so far this season from uh, Seton Hall? The little guy makes some extraordinarily rare passes. The big guys just cannot handle it. Now, I talked to George Blaney about that, and he says you just got to have your hands ready around him all the time. When he penetrates, outstanding distributing, but some of those balls, you've got to be ready. Push and an offensive foul will be called away from the ball. Official Leroy Hendricks with the call to the displeasure of Ralph Willard. Panthers early on, a bit of a foul trouble here. They've got four team fouls, and we've only played five and a half minutes. Goes against Montego Cummings. That will be his first. Some pushing away from the ball with three officials able to pick that kind of hand movement away from the basketball. Pit on top by two as we approach the 14-minute mark. Pitch showing zone this time. It's a 1-3-1. The roll goes for Bayonne Tatey. And Ron, as we talked about, the winner of this game is likely going to be the team that has the bulk of the front court scoring. I think so. I mean, I think you've got to look at both backcourts. They're going to put some points up. Who else will step up? Will it be Donnell Williams for Seton Hall? Maybe Chad Varga inside for the Panthers. A double team on Varga, and it's knocked off the knee there of Lavelle Sanders. So the Panthers will have it back with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Had Seton Hall for their last victory. They've lost five of their last six. And in that game, a win at Rutgers for George Blaney's club. Danell Williams stepped up for 27 in that game and really lifted them to victory. Cummings, nice look down low. Great rejection there by Seton Hall's Dwayne Jordan. Quick leaping ability on that one. Got off the floor very quickly. There's a deflected pass by Taylor. Now Sanders looking for another three. A rebound down to Chad Varga. Varga had a nice job on the boards against Miami. He had nine the other night. On the other end, Kelly Taylor cannot get the three to fall. Tied up at eight apiece. Interesting case to this game so far. Both clubs will look to run if they have some numbers. Otherwise, we'll see this kind of a half-court set. Panthers man-to-man -man right now. Based on the first meeting between these two teams, we're not going to see a whole lot of points. The final score in that first game uh, in the 50s, 53 to 51. Another turnover by Seton Hall. Little foot shuffle there. Fifth already in this game as Tatey dragged the pivot. Kelly Taylor will take a seat on the pit bench. Cummings now will handle the point. Leon Murray has just checked into the game. Again, Gerald Jordan with the rebound, unable to get it. Murray follows, and he'll have two shots coming up. Second and third chances in early in this game. Pitt is able to establish themselves off the backboards, particularly off the offensive glass. Jordan does a nice job here to rebound, but brings the ball down. But Murray, right place, right time to draw the foul. Dwayne Jordan picks up his first, and Leon Murray, a member of the University of Pittsburgh football team, at the free throw line. Panthers doing it on the board so far. Pitt with seven rebounds, Seton Hall with four. Ralph Willard going to the bench early in this one, trying to get a lift, and that one doesn't catch any iron, so that'll be Seton Hall's basketball out of bounds. Tied up at eight apiece. And Leon Murray smiles as he walks back to play defense to shake that one off. Got to just shake it off. If you're on the road, you might hear the air ball chant, but not at home. Panthers 1-3-1 one, one zone. Let's see if Seton Hall can free up Williams for a jumper. There he is. Tatey with the offensive rebound. And Lavelle Sanders hits his second three-pointer of the half, and Seton Hall has the lead by three. Sanders off to an outstanding start in this game. He's carrying Seton Hall offensively right now. Montego Cummings, Jason Mell, Gerald Jordan, Varga, and Murray, the five on the floor for Pitt as Jordan goes to the basket, and he'll draw the foul. It'll be the third team foul against Seton Hall. And a timeout here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Just inside of 12 minutes to go in the opening half, George Blaney's Pirates lead it by a three.
Pizza Hut memo number six, 65 pepperonis. Guys, you saw the memo? When we said 65 pepperonis for large pepperoni pizza, it was not, repeat not, a typo. One, it's 65, 20 more than last year. Overlap, 65. So start laying them down. 64, Soon you'll have a better wrist than a car dealer in Vegas. Sure. 62, 63, 64, 65. And trust us, nobody ever complained about too much pepperoni on a pizza. Five, six, six. Hey, we've got 56. Pizza Hut, making it great. Hey, Mom! Again and again. Is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just For Men gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just For Men gel, the sure thing for a natural look. Welcome to Park Avenue. A place where simple elegance resides. A place where the power of understatement is understood. Welcome to the all-new Park Avenue by Buick. The power of understatement. Early on, Seton Hall with a three-point lead. And today's Big East Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated and a use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Seton Hall on top, 11-8. To Lavelle Sanders has been the story offensively for the Pirates. He has scored nine of his team's 11 points. On the other side for Pitt, four different Panthers have scored. Jason Maldo still looking for his first points of the game. Dropped that one off. Nobody home. And on the return, Jason cannot get it to fall. Ball kicked out of bounds there by Tatey. And Pittsburgh will have a fresh 35. Seton Hall have been out-rebounded overall games this year by seven rebounds a game. That's why very important that Tatey step up big inside in this one. Danelle Williams, Jackie Caba went down this season and has been not playing. He'll be out, stress fracture in the leg, so a big loss inside. There he is in street clothes on the Seton Hall bench. Just a spectator this afternoon. Originally, he was scheduled to start resuming practice earlier uh, two days ago, but that's not going to happen, as you see with that... Uh, Walking cast still on, he will be out of action. Three second violation gives the ball back over to Seton Hall. It's tough to replace him inside at 6'10, as you see his size. Very important on the backwards. I thought Mail had a shot last time, gave it up. Oh! Sanders cannot get the ball to fall, but going after the rebound, Pitt commits the foul. Fifth team foul against the Panthers. Nice look inside. Shaheen Holloway quiet so far. Nice over the shoulder pass though that time. A little bit of contact there with Jordan up against Sanders. Foul on the rebound action. Inbounds goes to Sanders and Pitt will pick up another foul on a push. Team foul number six. 11-15 to play here in this opening half and so if things work out Seton Hall should spend a good part of this uh, half at the free throw line. Kelly Taylor picks up that one his first. Seton Hall has not excelled at the free throw line, but when you go, you've got to make hay, especially on the road where you're trying to keep yourself, if you can, up in the ball game. as Seton Hall is right now up three. Holloway controls the traffic out front. As Ron said, he hasn't done anything yet offensively, but he can quietly lull you into sleep, and all of a sudden, before you know it, he starts launching yeah. bombs. He had nine threes in a game this year against Boston College. There he goes. First one not there for Holloway. Good hustle after the rebound by Dwayne Jordan, and it will go to the Panthers. Jordan really gave his body up on that when the ball went out off of his foot. When you see those three-point shots taken, a lot of times long rebounds, so you've got to really go out deep to go get them. Holloway watching Von Tigo Cummings. Leon Murray remains on the floor for Pitt. This is the, the earliest action he has seen as a Panther. He went in in the first half in the game against Miami, Pitt's last outing, but this is the earliest that Murray's been on the floor for Pitt. Well, Ralph Lewis really had to go to the bench with Mail and Blount. Each two fouls. Oh! 
Montego wanted to send that one down, didn't he? Cummings went for the dunk and going high. Bayonne Tatey rejects it, commits his second personal foul. Pitt needs something to give it a lift right here, and Cummings tried to do it. Good movement without the basketball and a nice backdoor cut. Tatey prevents the, the dunk but picks up his second personal foul in the process. Montego Cummings with two points so far this afternoon. He has been the most productive player for the Panthers over the last uh, 11 games. He is averaging 19 points per game, as you can see there, just under 19 points. Four rebounds, four assists, and nearly three steals per outing. And also, great defensive play. He can really put the points up, and the more the game opens up, the better he becomes. One out of two for Montego Cummings. Panthers will have the ball back. Down now by two. 11-9 is the score. Seton Hall on top with just over 10 minutes to play. Pitt wants to see if they can involve the crowd a little bit here. Maybe get a, get a three-point shot to go, get a dunk inside, and get them fired up and get the pressure on. Panthers have gone six full minutes without a field goal. Murray tries to end that, and they'll call a foul against the Pirates out front. When you come off the bench, you come into a game, you want to try to make some things happen. Make a play defensively, get the ball to the goal, and that's what Murray's trying to do here this afternoon. Ralph Willard inserting Leon Murray because they like his athletic ability. As we mentioned, he's a member of the University of Pittsburgh football team, came in as a highly touted quarterback, uh, changed over to receiver this past season. Like his athleticism, it took him a little bit of time but once the season was over to get into basketball playing condition. Well, that's exactly right. It takes some time, but he does have, even though he's missed all those free throws, he's got nice form in there, just needs some playing time. Good look for Kelly Taylor. Leaves it short, though. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Gerald Jordan. So the lid remains on top of that hoop for the Panthers. They have now gone over six minutes without a field goal. Seton Hall on top by two. Sometimes when you go cold, you've got to get it off your defense pit. Nothing for five from three-point land. The Hall doing a pretty good job. Got to increase the defensive intensity, get some stops, see if you can get some fast breaks, and maybe an easy one. LaBelle Sanders has already hit two three-pointers. Comes up empty that time, and on the foul, it will go against Seton Hall. Gerald Jordan has come in and played well on both sides of the glass here for Pittsburgh. He has done a nice job. Blount goes down early with two fouls. Jordan has come in. Does a good job there, again, to get up and get after that rebound. We've got hacked on the play. Coquin has got him on the rebounding action. Ralph Willard back to his bench looking for a spark. He has inserted Jared Lockhart in the game. Andre Howard's also checked in. That one rims in and out. Jordan again keeps it alive for Pitt. They'll call a traveling violation to the dismay of the Pitt faithful who were looking for a push. Tough break, looked like he was tripped when he went to dribble the basketball. However, Jordan's made a couple of great rebounds in this first half, yep. decided to put the ball on the floor. Saw so Ralph Willard, if you read the lips there, he said, don't put the ball on the floor. <laughs> Go right up. Seton Hall turns the ball back over and Pitt will take it. An opportunity here for the Pirates with Pittsburgh very cold to pull this thing out a little bit, but they've been unable to advance the lead. Lockhart with a nice head fake, cannot get the ball to fall. Here comes Lavelle Sanders. To Junior inside look and a foul call as Kellen Payton has just checked in, goes to the basket. So that'll be team foul number seven against Pitt with 8.41 remaining in this opening half. Kellen Payton, the sophomore center from Biloxi, Mississippi, 6'10. He's been playing with sore knees all year long. That was another bullet pass that he was able to corral in. But George Blaney can get a lift out of Payton, Jordan, Katie inside. Very important for the Pirates if they want to win this game on the road today. Peyton started five games at center for Seton Hall earlier in the season, but then as Ron said, those knees started to ache him, and he has played just uh, 84 minutes over the last seven games. Lane violation will be charged against Seton Hall, and the Panthers will take it back down by two. There's George Blaney. He's had his share of big front line problems this season. Earlier on, uh, we took a look at that Seton Hall bench, and uh, 
Jackie Kaba over there as a spectator. Peyton has the knees. Even Lavelle Sanders had an ankle sprain against uh, Syracuse a few games back, and that just now is starting to come back about 95%. It's that point in the year, too, where you're kind of banged up, and you just got to try, if you can, to play your way through it. Away from the ball, Chad Varga tangled up there with Kellen Payton, and they'll call a holding foul against Payton, and that'll be team foul seven against the Hall. A little too aggressive, perhaps, down in the blocks, the hand in the back, a little bit of holding action, and yeah, Peyton could call for it. One and one opportunity coming up for Chad Varga. I'm still wondering, that was against me? Is it me or was it against the other guy? What happened on that one? But neither team shooting well from the free throw line. Chad Varga playing much better basketball lately for Pitt. He's had the stress fracture problems himself. And he's playing himself back into the kind of condition that he was in last year for the Panthers. Saw a little pop of speed there from Shaheen Holloway. He draws the foul. Jason Mao, who started the game, has not scored yet, will come in and replace Jarrett Lockhart, the freshman on the Bronx, will take a seat. Well, for Seton Hall to be winning this game right now, Tony, up to Holloway and Williams have yet to score for the Pirates today. That's that's a surprise. If there's a weakness in Shaheen's game, and he does so many things well, it would be right here at the free throw line as you take a look at Dwayne Jordan replacing Lavelle Sanders. Shaheen shooting just 51% from the free throw line on the season. Talked to Julius Blaney about that before the game, and he said he's got the same routine from the foul line every time but his hand doesn't always follow through going directly to the basket and at times he gets himself out of sync. Very low scoring opening half. It's a 12-9 Seton Hall lead as we approach the eight minute mark. Both clubs have got to find ways to get the ball to the basket. The perimeter game so far for both of these teams just not there. The hole opens for Jason Mayo. He scores the basket and draws the foul. Nope. <laughs> That's the formula. If, it, if the shot's not there, the defense is really extended by both teams. Take it to the basket. Jason Mayle, known for the three-point shooting. That's a great shot right there, the finish, and he got hacked and that in the ends, process. Ronnie, that ends a drought of over eight minutes that Pitt had gone without a field goal. That's a dry spell. And the amazing thing about it is they're only down by one. And now a chance to take the lead. That's a good way to get a spark. Chad Varga off the alley-oop lob. And that gets the crowd going a little bit. A play like that can really get the hometown fans into the game. Holloway nearly lost it and get it back. Gets it back. Got two of the quickest hands out there. Two of the quickest sets of hands. Both Holloway and Kelly Taylor, one, two in the Big East Conference when it comes to steals. Now Pitt. Tries to get a little offense going, and Varga responds his second consecutive basket. He has six points. The Panthers lead by three. George Blaney wants to quiet things down a bit. He'll take a 20-second timeout. Nice lift by Chad Varga. George Blaney's club, and for that matter, Pitt have both been cold in this first half, and you're looking for someone to get a surge. Chad Varga giving Pitt a lift the last couple of times. George Blaney, look for him to put some more pressure on. Pittsburgh in this game and try to get some things going. Nice look in there to Varga with the finish. And on the other end, Varga from the baseline, a guy who can take it out and knock it down. As we said earlier, Varga did not play in the first game against Seton Hall because of that stress fracture. But since his return, nine points, nearly five rebounds a game, averaging about 23 minutes. Those are not to equal to what he did last season when he led the team in rebounding, but they're not that far off, and he also provides a great deal of leadership for this team. People don't realize when you miss games, when you miss a month of action, it takes a while to get yourself back. And Varga, he's a real worker. He just keeps getting there. Sanders forcing it and getting it to fall. Double figures early for Lavelle Sanders. He has the 11 and the Panthers lead at one. 11 out of 14. He came ready to play. And George Blaney pleased that Sanders has got the hot hand in this one. Montego Cummings calling for it. He's got the mismatch there against Holloway. Rejected nicely. And back comes Seton Hall. A traveling violation will be called against Lavelle Sanders. Seton Hall had a three-on-two break, unable to convert. 6.26 remains opening half. Pitt leads it by one. You're watching Big East Basketball on Creative Sports.
now there's a vehicle designed to give you greater control in the downhill that lets you express yourself with its free style and is instrumental in getting you cross country. Jimmy by GMC. With available push button four wheel drive and a lease price that's easy to handle, it lets you conquer life's ups and downs. See your Tri-State GMC dealer today. Alonzo Morning, 21 points per game. Loves McDonald's French fries. Hey! Reggie Miller, threat from the outside. Loves McDonald's French fries. Whoa! Patrick Ewing dominates the post. Loves McDonald's French fries. Yow! Scotty Pippen, over 1,500 career steals. Hey, hey, hey. Uh-oh. And a great first step. McDonald's, America's favorite fries. Go get him. Is there anybody else you can think of to call? I'm not going back to the office with this stuff. Next. Moo, 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 moo. Moo, 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 moo. They definitely wanted a large, oversized animal. What can I tell you? <laughs> Wipe out. I'm not going to use anybody I saw here today. Not a single one of them. If finding a Sports Channel mascot were only as easy as finding great college basketball. What about a Muppet? Uh, Muppet's knows. homework for scale never happened. A low-scoring contest between the Pitt Panthers and Seton Hall 15-14 with just over six minutes remaining in our opening half. Other action today from the Big East Conference. Notre Dame in South Bend knocks off UConn in overtime, 71-65. Huskies really struggling now without Kirk King in that lineup. Also at the Carrier Dome, Syracuse knocks off the Georgetown Hoyas by three and one of the great rivalries in Big East Conference play. Early on, first half in Morgantown, West Virginia, with a 16-13 lead over Providence. And coming up tonight, Rutgers taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Montego Cummings knocks in his fifth point of the afternoon. The Panthers lead it by three. That's a real nice win for Syracuse in that game in that West Virginia game against Providence. An excellent matchup. Cincinnati, a 21-point win over Marquette. It's been a long week for Marquette. They also lost to Maine. ACC, you see Clemson rolling over Maryland by 12 points. Well, Danell Williams finally connects in this game from three-point land, and maybe he will get on a hot streak. So far, just five points from the front line of Seton Hall as Jason Mayle continues to look for his stroke. And inside, Andre Howard converts with the rebound. Pitt's done an excellent job in this first half. Offensive rebounding. Seton Hall's got to do a better job boxing out. Pitt stays in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. He's not been able to free up all the way, but he should be able to penetrate. Oh, another nice steal. Great defensive work. Here's Kelly Taylor. And he is hammered and hard. He lands himself into the seats there. Unfortunately, did not fall to the ground. Heavy foul there by Danelle Williams on Kelly Taylor. Always worry about a player when he goes airborne. Holloway really having trouble getting on track in this game. Kind of a lazy pass. Kelly Taylor really gets taken out on that play, but fortunately able to maintain his balance as he goes to the side of the basket. Freshman who sat out all but one game last season because of a back injury which required surgery comes into today's game averaging 10 points as you see Remus Kokanis the freshman from Lithuania come on for Seton Hall. Both of these teams are young. They play a lot of young players. Kelly Taylor uh, as you mentioned the back problems a year ago his first season in Big East play. He's a good looking young prospect. It's a good point about the youth. Uh, today's starting 10 players, just three of them were seniors. We'll break it down uh, even farther. Uh, two freshmen and three sophomores among that starting 10. And so this is a very, two very young teams. A lot of youth in the whole conference. And I also think a lot of, a lot of young, exciting players, which will bode well for the future. Nice pressure. That was five seconds, Tony. Pitt Panthers doing what they do best. One of the top defensive teams. In the Big East Conference, Pitt is rated uh, in the top five in four different Big East categories, and we've seen their defense here on the last two possessions. First, the steal that led to the Taylor attempted basket, and there another turnover. Got to help your teammate out, though. If he kills his dribble, which you shouldn't do, show up for the basketball and help him out. 
Four points, Panther lead. Bad shot there by Jason Mayo. Varga, though, able to pick it up and knock it down. <laughs> Varga now with a team high, eight points, and the Panthers enjoying their largest lead at six. How about Varga, right place, right time? He just stuck his hand out and got that one. That was a near backcourt by Seton Hall. Good look for Lavelle Sanders, unable to get the roll. The Panthers, though, commit the foul going after the rebound. I think it was Howard boxing out down there against Jordan. Ralph Willard will go to his bench. You see Gerald Jordan come out of the floor. You're right, Ron. Andre Howard picks up the personal. His first. Team foul number nine against the Panthers, and that will send Dwayne Jordan to the line. Jordan making his sixth consecutive starts here this afternoon. Boy, the free throws have just been a big problem for Seton Hall this year, shooting just 63% as a team this year. Sanders commits the foul. No question about that one as he <laughs> collides with Von Tigo Cummings. The junior from Queens picks up his first personal. First and ten. <laughs> he had a great idea there. When your man is spinning with the ball, if you can turn him and help out, okay. But George Blaney saying, oh, just too much contact on the play. And Ralph Willard hoping his team can get hot. But they've done a nice job to pull into the lead in this first half. Yeah, they went over six minutes without a field goal. Nonetheless, they lead it by six with 3.58 to play in this half. The thing about Pitt, even when they go cold, is they stay in games because they tend to be very consistent defensively with the variety of different looks that Ralph Willard puts out there. And for Seton Hall, generally, they're keeping themselves in games as well. Same way, but they've got to do a better job on the boards. Pitt again, second chances. Males three, not there. Here's Lavelle Sanders. Canis on the floor for the Pirates also gives them some offense. Not hesitant to shoot. Nice look, but unable to hold on to the ball is Roy Leaf. And Seton Hall gives the ball back. Three minutes and 43 seconds to play in the half. Timeout here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Now there's a computer that puts you in touch with the world like never before. You're the one. At the touch of a button, you get TV, FM stereo, even a digital answering machine. Hey, Doug, this is Donald Trump. Just got your email. The Toshiba Infinia with the Intel Pentium processor. When you're ready for a different computer. From the people who brought you one clever idea after another comes the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Right now, you can get a Plymouth Voyager Plus, this great limited time lease offer for only $2.49 a month. You get air conditioning, seven passenger seating, and more. And you get it for only $2.49 a month. Don't miss the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Another clever way to save. And it's only at your Plymouth dealer. Six-point Panther lead as we have just inside of four minutes to play in this opening half. Chad Varga did not play in the first game between these two teams. He's been the offensive factor here in the opening half for the Pitt Panthers. And he's done it as the half has worn on. Male short here. Pitt's done a good job to get second chances in this first half. Able to get that one to go. And a very interested spectator there to your right. That is his wife, Christy, along with two-year-old son, Cameron, watching Dad play here this afternoon. Enjoyed that last shot by Dad, the jumper. And LaBelle Sanders been enjoying his first half here for Seton Hall. That's his third three, 14 oh. points for LaBelle Sanders and a chance for some more to Kukanis. Great block by Kelly Taylor out of bounds. And Seton Hall will have it, but Taylor did a great job there. Keep away from the basket from Kukanis. Nice quick steal there by Holloway. Looked like an easy deuce for Seton Hall. I don't know how he got all ball on that one. Kukanis draws a crowd, but they'll whistle a travel before the contact in the paint. 
that hesitation move when you tend to drag the pivot foot. Seton Hall, though, showing some pressure now. 2-2-1, two, three-quarter court style. That frees up Jason Mayo. Three is there for Mayo, his first long-range jumper of the game. See, one of the risks with putting pressure on if it can get the ball up the floor is that they may find Mayo open, as they did there. So Canis may have hurt himself if he just went down hard. Pressure by the Panthers. Tipped out of bounds there by Cummings, and Seton Hall will have 15 seconds on the shot clock. There's a good look at Remus Kokanis, the freshman from Lithuania. Averages seven points per game. He had eight points in the first meeting between these two schools. He can give Seton Hall some solid minutes off the bench to make a lot of mistakes. Nice look. Jordan, though, unable to finish it off, and Gerald Jordan takes down the rebound. Very impressive rebounding performance here by Gerald Jordan in this opening half. And Jordan ran into the ball that time. Cummings comes up with the miss. Montego oh, Cummings. What a pump fakes there to finally get that one to go. All the way the ball's been being swatted around here. That's not a surprise. Everything's been contested here in the opening half. Sanders again <laughs> knocks it down. Someone better watch him. What a half by Lavelle Sanders. He's up above his average already. The average is 15 a game. Long one from Bontigo Cummings. And Shaheen Holloway takes it down for Seton Hall. Pitt leads by five inside of two minutes to play in the half. Well, Holloway trying to stay within himself right now. Just has not had shot opportunities in this first half. They get the mismatch here. Holloway instead will take it. Bad shot that time by Shaheen. Loose ball. Dwayne Jordan knocks it in. And just like that, it's a three-point game. How did he come up with that ball? Just squirted loose for him. Miscommunication there between Jordan and Varga as to who is going to get it. So Jordan said, I'll take it. Thank you. 2-3 zone by the Pirates right now. Should open up an outside shot. Mail would be the guy. Jordan from the baseline knocks it through. Four points for the senior from Philadelphia. Panthers lead it by five as the offense begins to pick up here after a very quiet start to this game. That was a nice ball movement by Pitt that time to swing the basketball. If you move the ball around from right to left or left to right, you can get some good shots. Great head fake by Sanders. He feels it. 20 points in the opening half for Lavelle Sanders. As Ron said, he averages just 15 a game. You know, there are some nights where the shooting touch is just there, and Lavelle Sanders right now just feels it every time he touches the ball. You had a few of those nights, Mr. Perry. There were a couple, but I wish there were more, <laughs> but when it does happen, it's a great feeling. Cummings can't get the first try. Another chance, and he knocks it in. Vontigo Cummings with his ninth point. That's a nice second effort by Cummings. A very athletic player, loves to get himself slicing through the lane. 2-3 zone by Pitt. Shot clock is off, and so Seton Hall spreads the floor down by four points. What an effort by Sanders in this first half with 20 of the Seton Hall, 28 points. Just amazing. Shane Holloway with a conversation over there with George Blaney. Now he'll go to work. Watch yes. out, he's left alone. Sanders cannot get that one to fall as the half comes to an end. And so it's been the Pitt Panthers against Lavelle Sanders in the opening half. Sanders scoring 20 of Seton Hall's 28, but the Panthers have the lead into the locker room by four. We'll be back. Today's Big East telecast is brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Welcome to the Seton Hall experience. In the real world, success is a matter of degrees. A degree from Seton Hall provides the fast track to success in the real world. At commencement last year, 70% of Seton Hall seniors had jobs or acceptance letters from graduate schools. We also encourage exploration of the moral, ethical, and spiritual aspects of students' lives. The real world is waiting. And the hall will prepare you. Sample the Seton Hall experience for yourself. Call 1-800-THE-HALL. of Pittsburgh. 
Where could the Bell Atlantic be to be be? Well, the B2B could be by the computer for its thousands of northern New Jersey sales and service centers. Or the B2B could be by the supply closet for its endless lists of new suppliers. But the B2B better be by the boss because it now has a unique info guide stocked with great tips on how to grow your business. The Bell Atlantic B2B. For your business today and your business to be. Bell Atlantic, the heart of communication. Men. Is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just For Men gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just For Men gel, the sure thing for a natural look. Now there's a vehicle designed to give you greater control in the downhill that lets you express yourself with its free style and is instrumental in getting you cross country. Jimmy by GMC. With available push button four wheel drive and a lease price that's easy to handle, it lets you conquer life's ups and downs. See your Tri State GMC dealer today. Welcome back to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, where it's time to check the Big East Wire. 22-28 pin on top of Seton Hall. We're ready to begin our second half of play. Tony Caridi along with Ron Perry. There's our leading man, Lavelle Sanders, the junior from the Queens, with 20 points in the opening half. And Vontigo Cummings is the scoring leader for Pitt with nine first-half points. Four-point game. Pitt comes into this one, 11 and 11 overall, looking to go over the 500 mark. Seton Hall at eight up and 12 down looking for the victory. Really important to establish control of a ball game. First five minutes of the second half, crucial to do that, especially in a game like this, which is close. Kelly Taylor floats in and scores his sixth point of the afternoon, and that Pitt lead goes out to six. Nice opener for Pitt that time. Taylor with a penetration. No one stepping in for Seton Hall to put the stop on him. Ball is blown dead. An injured player for Seton Hall, Bayonne Tatey, shaken up on that drive to the basket by Kelly Taylor and he'll try to walk it off. That's the last thing that uh, Seton Hall needs is another injury to one of its frontline players. Tatey must have twisted his ankle the way he ran up the court. He's trying to just run it off. Man to man by the Panthers. Shaheen Holloway held in check in the opening half. He's limited to just one point off the turnover. Jason Mao on the floor. Last touch there by Danelle Williams and Pitt will have the basketball. Ralph Willard Popping off the bench, he wanted a foul call, not just the ball, he wanted a foul. Danelle Williams just mustn't have had his hands ready for the pass that time. Seems surprised to get the basketball once again. All the way there, you've got to have your hands ready. Same five that began the game on the floor for Pittsburgh. That includes the center, Mark Blount, who spent uh, the majority of the first half on the bench with two early fouls. Varga falling away from the basket. A rebound down to Blount and a foul call against Seton Hall. You can see Varga on a move like that, that the stress fracture in the foot bothers him because he just doesn't get the spring on that one that we're used to seeing him get. Personal foul against Bayonne Tatey, his third personal. Taylor with Cummings left alone immediately. They go inside to Mark Blount. And a whistle and a walk. Good call. The extra step was taken that time by the big fella. Well, kind of sit a lot of that first half, Tony. Picks up two quick ones. Jordan really did a nice job filling in for him in the middle. Blount uh, has not scored here this afternoon. He had 17 against Miami as Shaheen Holloway scores his very first field goal of the game. Well, if Seton Hall is going to win this game on the road, Holloway's got to come up big in the second half. Nice penetration that time. Once again, they work it down inside to Varga. And he'll draw the foul against Dwayne Jordan. So it's quite apparent what uh, Ralph Willard's words were in the locker room. Get the ball down in the block to Chad Varga. He had a good first half with eight points. They go down to him twice here early on in the second half. And he'll have a couple of shots coming up. Well, it'd be like in football. You've got to establish the running game. To be successful in basketball, you've got to get some presence down low to then free up your outside shooters. And that might get Mayo some open three-point shots. 
Chad Varga into double figures. He now has 10. The Panther lead at six. And a quick crossover from Shaheen Holloway. They'll call the foul out front. I think it's going to be Blount. Mark shakes his head in disbelief, and yes, it is. Against Mark Blount, he'll pick up his third personal with 18.26 remaining. He just got caught out of position that time with Holloway streaking down. Sanders working inside, and the reverse is there for Donnell Williams. And a loose ball stolen by Shaheen Holloway. Two of the Big East best at stealing the basketball head-to-head -head right there, Shaheen Holloway and Kelly Taylor. Can't put the ball down too much around each other. Quick hands. Shaheen works off the screen, has it rejected by Mark Blount, and nice spin by Taylor. Three on one break. Cummings. Oh, nice fast break by Pitt that time. Kelly Taylor ran it beautifully, and Cummings, he can really elevate. The sophomore from Thomas, Georgia, rips it down for his 11th point. The key to that one was the rejection, and then that Taylor spin really freed up the break. And a pushing foul will be called out front. Montego Cummings picks up his third personal, so both Blount and Cummings now with three apiece. That was the rejection by Blount to set up the fast break. Holloway looking to penetrate a lot more. That was Cummings on the finish. Turnover, Cummings to Varga. Wow. Did Varga get up on that one? Chad Varga ignites the crowd and draws the foul. And just like that, the Panthers take a four-point halftime lead and take it out to eight. And yes, his wife Christy enjoying it very much. Up on her feet. Where's the two-year-old? He's giving it a standing O, I hope, too. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, his foot didn't look uh, like it was bothering on that one. Couple of fast break baskets by Pitt. They're out running, and Seton Hall's got to get back defensively. Varga unable to finish off on the three point play, but Pitt now leads it by eight. It's largest lead of the game. Bayonne Tatey over Chad Varga. Big basket for the Pirates as they take that lead down to six. You do not want, as you said, the first five minutes very important on the opposing team's home floor. You don't want Pitt to get rolling here if you're Seton Hall because it could be over before you know it. Then you just got a total uphill battle on your hands, and that's what you don't want on the road. Blount is pushed. They'll charge that one to Tatey. That'll be his fourth personal foul. George Blaney's got a problem to deal with. He'll have to take Bayonne Tatey out of the game. Kellen Payton will come on for the Pirates. George Blaney, as we talked about in the first half, already thin in terms of front court personnel. Kaba out, the stress fracture, so he doesn't have a lot of people he can turn to on the bench. Kelly Taylor with a nice fake in the one-hander. Lavelle Sanders, who led all scores with 20 points in the first half, has not scored yet here in the second half. Great defense by the Panthers. Blount finds Cummings. The big guy inside will draw the foul. Mark Blount will have two shots. Pittsburgh now exploiting the front line of Seton Hall. They really are. And Janelle Williams picking that foul up, and a lot of fouls right now mounting for Seton Hall inside. There's the look. So Janelle Williams, I should say Kellen Payton, picks up the personal foul, his third as Mark Blount scores his first point of the basketball game. We saw Blount had a nice block here just a few moments ago. Currently leads Pitt with 55 rejections. That's second best in the Big East, 15th best in the nation. He was really playing solid basketball a few weeks ago. Then he got that tooth in the, in the wrist, a real fluke injury during practice and misses four or five games. So Blount getting himself back into the flow. Both coaches have really had some injuries to deal with. Lavelle Sanders finds another open shot. 22 points for Lavelle Sanders, and it's 42-36 pit. Now coming with that quick first step. Rejected by Kellen Payton, and a foul against Mark Blount will be his fourth personal. So the go-to man inside for Pitt has just picked up his 
fourth personal with exactly 16 minutes remaining. It's a six-point game at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, 42-36. This is Ford Escort. It's new and it's nifty. It's made for the smart, the intelligent thrifty. It's new out and in, has airbags for two. Even anti-lock brakes are available. Ooh, the trunk, it is huge to hold tremendous treasure. And if your treasure is of stupendous measure, the rear seat folds down to let bigger things in, still leaving room for your next of kin's kin. It has all the what's its and gidgets to put it concisely. And Escort's right price should suit you quite nicely. February 14th. Power corrupts. Power deceives. Power kills. Clint Eastwood. You know who did it, don't you? So would you. Absolute Power. Rated R. Opens everywhere Friday. Neither rain, nor mud, nor ruts and ridges, nor rocks and rivers, nor sleet, nor snow shall keep a new Toyota 4Runner from keeping you from your appointed rounds. Power you need, and all the room and comfort you want. And with a starting price around $20,000, it could take your dollar even further. Well, it's been a game to this point that Mark Blount would like to forget. The seven-foot center for the Panthers once again becomes a spectator after picking up two more fouls in the first four minutes of the second half. And so with four in the game, he and Ralph Willard will just watch. They're, they're a game sometimes where you're just a half a step out of position. That's what's happened to Blount in this one in both halves. Off the inbounds, great work. Lavelle Sanders finding Seton Hall's Donnell Williams. He scores his seventh point. We talked about Williams having to contribute. That was a nice basket there, and Holloway continues to be very quiet offensively for the Seton Hall Pirates. Blount on the bench. Gerald Jordan has come into the game. He goes up, and he'll draw the foul. Dwayne Jordan picks up his third person. The question right now is, is Seton Hall going to have enough players to finish with? You've got <laughs> Bayonne Tatey with four, Dwayne Jordan with three, and Kellen Payton also with a bit of a foul problem. George Blaney will just have to go with smaller and smaller lineups. You still have Kokinas that he can bring into the game, but he's not going to give you big size. He's 6'4", and he's going to check in right now. It'll be a smaller lineup immediately for Seton Hall. He'll replace Dwayne Jordan. Sophomore from New York City will go to the bench with those three personals. 43-38, a five-point pit lead with 15-38 to go in this one. Oh, everybody everybody. Did on the line there. <laughs> everybody stepped in. Apparently the ball was in first. The basket will count. Six points now for Gerald Jordan. Jordan has come on in place of Mark Blount. He has that deep knee bend, and I think when he bends, everyone thinks he's going to shoot, but he's just getting ready to shoot. Peyton is pushed along the baseline. It's really been a game where the pushing, the body contact has been called from the beginning of the game. And you know, the officials have been consistent in that regard, but we are getting the mounting fouls here in the big people. That one was against Gerald Jordan. Now inside, they go to Kellen Pate. Has the ball knocked away by Andre Howard, and a quick release taken there by Danelle Williams. Loose ball foul will be called against the Pirates. Going to be Pate. Number four against Kellen Pate. Free throws are going to come up big as well in this second half where already Seton Hall's committed seven, so it's bonus time early into this second half for Pitt. Not that that's a big bonus considering how Pitt shot foul shots in the first half. They really struggled from the free throw line in the opening half. So you've got to take advantage of You get these opportunities, and there's another miss. Off the one and one, here comes Lavelle Sanders. Really across the country, free throw shooting and field goal shooting are down. Better defense, but hey, when you're at the foul line, you're there all by yourself. So there's no excuse except for just some concentration. Let there. me guess, and this is strictly a guess. You shot better than 75% from the line during your career. Oh yeah, I got the free throw. I knew it. Down. I had to, <laughs> especially when I was free there. I said, I gotta make some of these. <laughs> 
You can very rarely find a 75% foul shooter nowadays. And Gerald Jordan weaves in, and the follow-up is there for Andre Howard. Good look inside. Players today, athletic, quick, able to get it to the goal, but it seems like a lot of players want to get it there as opposed to pull up and shoot the jump shot. Let's see what we've got here for Pitt. It looks like the 1-3-1 zone. They're playing some man-to-man, -man, and these are the opportunities for Holloway to split and try to penetrate. Shaheen has been very quiet offensively. Just three points for Shaheen Holloway. Danelle Williams can't get the ball to fall. The loose ball comes down to Andre Howard. Had a good look at it that time. Now here comes Pitt leading it by eight. Long one for Mayo. Jordan again on the glass puts it in. That's turning out to be the difference in this game right now as Pitt goes up by ten. The second chance baskets. Offensive rebounding. 22nd timeout will be taken by the Panthers as they take their largest lead of the afternoon. It's Pitt by 10 with 13.53 remaining. And a 22nd timeout will be used by the Panthers. The long bomb by Jason Mayle, but once again, the position is there. Jordan's got the height advantage. Nobody puts the body on him. Williams tries to, but Jordan has just got better position. And that time, keeps the ball up. Puts it right in as, as opposed to going to the floor. He's been very productive off the bench today. Eight points, nine rebounds, and of those nine rebounds, seven of them have come on the offensive glass for Gerald Jordan. You said it uh, when we started the broadcast here this afternoon. You thought with the backcourts maybe neutralizing each other that rebounding would be the story, and for Gerald Jordan and the Panthers, it has been the story. They lead it by 10. Well, Blount gets into foul trouble, and you look for someone to step up. It's been Jordan. He finds Donnell Williams, now Lavelle Sanders, who already has five threes, give him six. 25 points for Lavelle Sanders, who single-handedly is keeping Seton Hall in the game. Keep trying to find him offensively. He's got that hot hand today. Nice look inside, but there's Shaheen Holloway to knock it free. It will go to the Pirates. Sanders again getting in there defensively that time. No, actually, that was Holloway getting a hand in there. I was just about to say, Sanders is everywhere. He got that to steal off of deception. He's only 5'10". He kind of crouched in there and then popped yeah. through across the lane. Holloway keeping his poise, though, despite the fact there aren't a lot of opportunities. Oh, nice strip. Kelly Taylor took it away from him. All the way to the basket. And Howard's there. Finally controlled by Seton Hall. Well, that was a great opportunity that time that Pitt could not capitalize on. It's a seven-point Panther lead. And here's Shaheen dancing to the basket, and he'll draw the foul. How was that for a quick first step as he penetrated to the goal? Talk about just shifting gears. Bang, right there by Cummings, who's a very good defender. Able to draw the foul, get himself to the foul line. The Jordan fouling him, huh? Yeah, Gerald Jordan picks up his second personal foul. Chad Varga, who sparked this team in the second half, he has scored 12, replacing Andre Howard. And Shaheen Holloway with his second trip to the free throw line this afternoon. You see the scoring differential there. Just three points this afternoon. Averages 18 per game. They've been playing the zone in this game. It's been keeping him out. You can see that he's the assist leader in the Big East, second in steals. The leader, of course, Kelly Taylor, who's playing in this game. But I think the, the zone has kept him out around the perimeter more. He's got to look for a shot and look to penetrate, but he's not forcing it. Now pressure by the Pirates. It's a five-point pit lead. Jason Mail tries to break free. It's stolen by Kokanis. And the freshman draws the foul on his way to the basket. You know, Seton Hall, despite the fact that they haven't really shot it that well today, with the exception of Seton, it's staying right in this game, just down five. So the freshman from Lithuania will step up to the free throw line. That was a big foul there. It goes against Montego Cummings. Now he has four personal. Well, you just can't try to dribble through pressure defense. Remus Kokanis does a nice job there to draw that foul. You're just not playing in this game if you don't have three or four fouls. <laughs> Kokanis steps up to shoot two. As you see Montego Cummings take a seat with 11 points so far. Hard-nosed kid averages about 19 minutes per game. He's fourth on the team in scoring with that seven-point-per-game average. They'll settle for one out of two. 
It's a four point hit lead. The Panthers have led by as many as 10 here in the second half. 12 and a half to go in the contest. Marga cannot get the scoop. Willard again back to Chad. And they'll call an offensive foul against Chad Varga. That time Varga goes too strong to the basket. He picks up the personal. You know, I watched his eyes just before he shot that second one, Tony, and he really looked at his man, lowered his shoulder, and as a result, charged right into him. But if he caught it and just went straight up, no problem, he would have banked it right home. 2-3 zone now by Pitt. Kevin Willard on the floor right now for the Panthers with Montego Cummings sitting down with the foul problem. See, this zone is really attacking the backcourt right now because Seton Hall hasn't been able to establish anything inside. Tie up and the possession arrow points to Seton Hall. The 11 minutes and 59 seconds to play here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. We've got an official's timeout on the floor. Pitt and Seton Hall keeping it close. You're watching Big East basketball on Creative Sports. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the University of Pittsburgh dance team. When steel runs through your veins like it does at Coast Steel Raritan, you don't ever want to see the day it stops flowing. The fact was, they might have had to shut down, uproot families, and leave New Jersey. But PSENG sent down Rich Aiello and a team of troubleshooters. They showed them how to cut operating costs and save jobs, and proved that PSENG's commitment to keeping their business in New Jersey is as strong as the steel they produce, and that's pretty strong. PSENG, the power of commitment. I whack the weeds. <laughs> so you want to know what's on my Discover Card statement. I'm a camp cook and a bad one, but I've got a good stove. And he loves to chase that. <laughs> the cash back bonus award. It all folds up into a carry. Uh, she loves to get flowers, and I love to give them. How many credit cards make a statement like that? Well, the toughest thing about uh, buying a wetsuit is, is trying them on. It pays to discover. <laughs> Use it where you see the Noah sign. The reviews are in. 86 Mets Curtain Call is a hit. Don't miss 86 Mets Curtain Call. Pizza Hut plays of the game brought to you by Pizza Hut making it great again and again and this guy's been making it great since the game's opening tip Seton Hall's Lavelle Sanders. Nice dish off right there to Danell Williams who connected it was a fine pass to the open man and then hitting another three what's he got six of those today playing a dynamite game all the way around and back to the live action Danell Williams has just hit a three pointer and just like that it's a one point game 48. 47. Nice job by Seton Hall to hang right in there in this one. Jason Mao launches a three and hits his second three of the game. Eight points for Jason Mao and Pitt now back on top by four. We talked about shooting at the beginning of this game and both clubs right now starting to heat up from the perimeter. Whistle and stepping over the baseline is Kakanis and the Pirates turn the ball over. Yeah, this is going to be a different game than the first meeting. These two teams played back in December. The final score uh, in that one was 53 to 51. It's already 51 47 with 11 minutes to go. And the Panthers come back, and now a technical foul will be called on the play. Hanging on the rim after the basket, and official Curtis Shaw calls the technical foul. So Gerald Jordan makes the jump shot. There's really no reason to do anything right there except let that basketball go in. Let's see what happens. Jordan hits the baseline jumper. Oh, and right there, Kelly Taylor, who had gone for the rebound, hangs on the rim, but Ralph Willard saying, hey, he thought he was trying to keep himself from, from falling on that play, so thus he hung on the rim. I think he had a solid argument. Yeah. He really did. It did not, uh, when it happened quickly, you didn't pick that up initially, but you take a look at that replay, and you can see that there was a potential there that it could have been undercut. You almost always see a guy hang on the rim when he's dumped the ball and if there's someone underneath him to hang. But that time legitimately he was going for the rebound and that's exactly what happened. 
Sanders makes both free throws. And now a whistle. And apparently the shot clock or game clock did not operate properly, and so official Curtis Shaw will signal over to the scorer's table to reset. And now they'll blow the horn and ask for a consultation. 11-01 remains in the game. It's 53-49 as George Blaney gets a explanation from Leroy Hendricks and Curtis Shaw. George Blaney saying reset. Shot clock was at 32. It's now at 29. I don't think it was, this wasn't winding down. Both clubs going zone now with all these foul difficulties. Both clubs having to go zone to try to eliminate the fouls. Holloway launches up a three, and a loose ball comes down to Kelly Taylor. Four point Panther lead. The Panthers have led by 10 here in the second half. Great look inside. Kelly Taylor draws a crowd. And Holloway controls to hit back defensively. Sanders, nice head fake. He'll go for a two. That was pretty good ball movement by the Pirates that time. Five or six touches. We approach the midpoint of the second half. Kevin Willard handling the point for the Panthers. Pittsburgh leads at 53-49. Big guy inside. Chad Barga finds his way to the basket. 14 points for Chad Barga. And a steal on the inbounds. Taylor scores off the, nearly scores off the steal. He'll draw the foul and have two shots coming up. It's always kind of a mental lapse when you take the ball out if you just get it picked off right away. And that's generally when it will happen because someone's got their eye on the ball. A guy like Taylor, who's so good at that, and Ralph Willard's hoping right now that his Panthers can put together a nice little spurt. Donnell Williams called on the foul. He becomes the third Seton Hall player to have four personals. He joins Kellen Payton and Donnell Williams with four personal fouls. Bayonne Tatey now with four, four personal fouls also. Seton Hall has been working so hard to get back into the game. Had just closed it to one, but a quick spurt by Pitt. But the Panthers right back up. So far this afternoon, as Pittsburgh has gone on to a few mini runs, so to speak, Seton Hall has been able to answer back. Shot clock now, approaching 10 seconds. Tight defense there. Taylor on Sanders. That clock now down to four. Gonna let it go. The way things have been going, it'll go in. Not this time, though, for Lavelle Sanders. Good defensive series by the Panthers. Seton Hall just stood around that time offensively. Got to move the ball, pass and cut. Man to man now by the Pirates. Double foul will be called by referee Mike Kitts. Contact inside, and they'll call a double foul. Ralph Willard, as you can see, not fully pleased with that call. It'll be a double foul, and the possession error will stay with Pittsburgh, giving them the basketball. Good pressure that time by Seton Hall. They're in the man-to-man -man now. They know that they've got to make another run right now to get back into this one. Kane is watching Jason Bell. This is Varga coming off the screen. Strong move inside. Chad Varga having himself a super second half. He has scored eight points here in the half, 16 for the game, and the Panthers take that lead back out to nine. First half, he helped the Pitt Panthers to get into the lead, and he's doing it again here with some key baskets in the second half. Kokanis with a good luck. And Taylor swipes it out of the air. Restolen by Kokanis. The head fake, the basket, and a foul. Nice. A Heads big up. hoop by Remus Kokanis. Wow. Well, that's, that's really staying with the play, though, isn't it? He misses the shot. 
keeps his eye on the rebounder as Seton Hall has really been getting just one shot each time. It makes a heads up play right here and he's able to finish and draw the foul. Good play. And Taylor did not bite on the fake at all, but he was able to force his body in there to make the contact. And now Kakanis goes to the free throw line with a chance to make it a six point deficit for the Pirates. Well, after watching uh, Shaheen Holloway play a few times this year and, and Kelly Taylor, I think if I had the ball around either one of those guys, I'm pretty sure I'd give it up, Tony. <laughs> they, like to, they like to steal it. Get rid of it, right? Here's Jason Mal. Good position inside Gerald Jordan with another rebound. He's into double figures and rebounds already. Nice thing about Mail for Pitt, he really extends the defense with that three point touch. Dwayne Jordan rips down the rebound. Seton Hall down by six. Seven minutes, 35 seconds to go in this game. Someone's got to be open as they double team Sanders. And Gerald Jordan nearly had the steal from Dwayne Jordan. Timeout here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. The Pitt Panthers lead it by six. Did you see what I saw? Unbelievable. Did you see what I saw? It is getting so crowded around here. We're out of here. The new Ford Expedition. It seats up to nine and tows more than anything in its class. Ford Expedition, the only way to get there. Hold it. This isn't you, it's an older guy. Oh, that was before I got rid of my gray hair with Just For Men hair color. Come on, that's too natural to be hair coloring. Just For Men. Apply and in five minutes rinse. Gray is blended away for a totally natural look. Think it'll work for me? In five minutes. Just for Men looks too natural to be hair coloring. And now try Just for Men color gel for the hard to color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out. Just five minutes. We could not deny the RAV4 our top ranking. The RAV4 breaks expected molds. The RAV4 rides a great deal better than many a sedan. Handling in both RAV4 models is excellent. The all-new RAV4 Recreational Activity Vehicle starts at only 15118. Maybe we should start calling it the RAV4. Driving it is great fun. The go-to man in the second half for Pittsburgh has been senior Chad Varga. Nice look inside by Kevin Willard. Beautiful bounce pass along the baseline. That's the way you want to get it there. And then Varga just powers his way in. He's been coming up with some big baskets. This is just another strong move up and in. And he's really been getting the job done down low in the second half, particularly for the Panthers. Timeout will be taken, a 20-second timeout. Shaheen Holloway could not get the ball inbounded. He slams the ball onto the court, did not want to use that timeout. So 7.32 to go, 58-52, Pitt on top. Let's check a look now at uh, out-of-town scores. Notre Dame earlier this afternoon knocked off UConn in overtime in South Bend, 71-65. Syracuse scores a three-point win at the Dome over Georgetown. West Virginia and Providence very tight in the second half, that game in Morgantown. And coming up later tonight, it's Miami against Rutgers. Cincinnati easy win over Marquette ACC Clemson by 12 over Maryland on the inbounds is steal. This is Kelly Taylor to the basket and Lavelle Sanders reaches and commits the foul. Kelly Taylor doing what he does so well with another strip and does the right thing getting it right to the goal as you see another final there number 13 Michigan over Penn State. Big 12 Colorado keeps on rolling scores the victory. North Carolina pounds Virginia and from the Atlantic 10 St. Joe's winning over Xavier. With the free throw from Kelly Taylor the Panther lead stands at seven with seven minutes and 26 seconds to play. It's been a game where Pitt has been holding on to modest leads. They've stretched it to double figures a couple of times. Seton Hall hangs right in there but 7.20 to go in it. It's time for another run by Seton Hall to try to close the gap right now. I guess the trump card that maybe Seton Hall is waiting to come through is Shaheen Holloway. Offensively, 
He's been limited to just one field goal, five points in the game. But he's a kid, and once he hits a couple, uh, gets into a bit of a tear, and uh, will let it fly, if that will happen this afternoon. Pitt's done a nice job to find him out here today in this half-court set, and there haven't been a lot of breaks where he can really display his quickness. Pocanus comes up short, ball tipped out, and it will go to Pitt. Official Curtis Shaw could not see the ball on the end line, so he asked for some assistance from Mike Kitts, who signals Pitt basketball. Now the double team on Kevin Miller, and he steps over the sideline. And Seton Hall will take it back, and now a technical foul will be called against the Panthers. Not what they needed. Kelly Taylor protesting the call, and a technical foul has just been assessed. Now, it was Taylor who picked up the technical foul earlier when he hung on to the rim. Willard actually stepped on the side out of bounds. Ralph Willard trying to figure the whole thing out, but you don't want to give Seton Hall a chance to get some momentum right now, but the free throws again have been a struggle spot for them all year long. Sanders misses the first. Ralph Willard will take his son, Kevin, out of the game. Montego Cummings will re-enter. As Sanders settles for one out of two, and the Hall will get the ball back, down by seven. That's the key, the fact that you get the possession after the technical. So a chance to make, if you get a basket, a three-point play out of it, or perhaps even a four-point play, if you can find a three. I correct myself on that last technical foul call. It was against Kevin Willard rather than Kelly Taylor. Here's Kakanis letting it fly. In good position on the rebound by Jason Mao. Back on the Panthers with a seven-point lead. Another big opportunity by the boards. Now, Seton Hall came out with just one point out of the technical foul. Lout back out there with the four fouls. Varga fighting for the loose ball, controlled by the Pirates. Seven point pit lead. We approach the six minute mark. Holloway all the way to the basket. That way, Forty, that way. Right. And a foul call will go against the Pirates. Is that acceleration again, but it's just the offense not there for Holloway today. Look at this drive. Just goes right by everybody that time for Pitt, but tough shot going to the goal. And some days the offense, it can be a struggle as it has been today. Give Pitt credit with the defense. They've done a good job to shadow Holloway all day long. That foul call against Seton Hall's Bayonne Tatey. He becomes the first foul casualty. He's done with five fouls, finishes the game with four points. There really haven't been that many chances today for Holloway to penetrate to the basket. I can remember two or three others, Tony. And he really hasn't looked against that extended zone for the long-range jump shot. Panthers just 10 of 23 from the free throw line, make it 10 out of 24. Sanders rips it down. And once again, Seton Hall staying close enough to make a run here, down by seven. Good look for Kakanis. They've got to get these to fall. Ball was kicked right into Donnell Williams' hands. Good hustle again by Kokanis. And someone other than Kokanis has got to step up for some perimeter shots. Taylor tried to stick it inside to Mark Blount, knocked out of bounds. It will stay with the Panthers. An interesting game from the standpoint that Pitt gets the lead. Seton Hall kind of hangs around, and that's right where we sit right now. 20-second timeout will be used. Five minutes and 39 seconds to go. Panthers on top by five, 60 to 55. And things won't get much easier here for Pitt. Their next five games, tough. Villanova at Providence, Georgetown, Boston College at Connecticut. Not a lot of breathers in there, Tony. Not at all. But you know, the way things are going in the Big East this season, you could take a look at those, and you could say they could win five or lose five just like that. It's been that crazy. That's exactly right. Tough matchup, just as we're seeing today, and you see Seton Hall sleep coming up. Miami's been tough at BC. Notre Dame in West Virginia and St. John's. Some tough matchups as well. On the inbounds, Mark Blount is fouled. He'll go back to the line to shoot two. I'd have to say, this is as much balance as we've seen top to bottom in the Big East in quite a few years. There have been years where you had one or two teams that really dominated play, but this year, you know, clearly it seems every game that it's a uh, bit of a toss-up as to who's going to win. I think that's going to make an extremely, Big yeah. East extremely interesting Big East tournament when we uh, head to New York in March. 
Yeah, pre-March Madness for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it should be a great tournament at Madison Square Garden this year with, uh, you know, truly an opportunity for someone, a real surprise team to come out with a tournament victory. You know, last year going in, pretty much knew a Villanova, a Connecticut were going to come out of there with the Big East Tournament Championship. This year, absolutely up for grabs. Panthers lead it by six, 5.20 to go in this game. Boot it over to the press <laughs> table. A nice uh, grab over there. Legitimate kick, kind of a bullet kick. Glad they didn't come over here that would have really tested the hand speed, Tony. 2 3 zone by Pitt. Sanders has been quiet for a while now, too. See if they can free him up for a jump shot. Sure, Ralph Willard stressed at halftime after the 20 point outing by Sanders to make sure that you shade number 20 in the second half. Dwayne Jordan inside against Mark Blount. He went right after him with those four personal fouls. Big basket makes it a four point game. That was a sweet spin move by Jordan that time. Game of possessions now with 440 to go. Every time you get it, you want to make sure you don't turn it over and you get a good look and good shot at the hoop. And the paint, Varga has it tied up, but Kane has stole it away. The tie up and the ball will go to Seton Hall. Boy, the freshman out of Lithuania has really given it all here this afternoon for Seton Hall, diving after the loose ball. We saw him earlier with that steal on the inbound. He went to the basket and drew the three point play, and now he ties up Chad Varga. Pirates will take it down four with four and a half remaining. He sticks his nose in there, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Comes from the same town in Lithuania as former Seton Hall star Arturis Karnishevis. He was a terrific player. Two possession game right now for Seton Hall. If they can convert and stop, get themselves right evened up in this game. Inside, great look, Jordan, the basket, and the foul. Dwayne Jordan, for the second consecutive time, comes inside and is open, scores the field goal, and will have a chance to make it a one-point game. Check this pass out. Oh, Fred, the needle time. It's like an end zone shot, isn't it? A quarterback just getting it right in there. Look at that pass right between the defense. Nice job by Holloway. Again, a lot of points haven't been there, but he's staying right in the game. The free throw does not go down for Dwayne Jordan. Panthers by two with four minutes remaining. Both clubs just struggling from the line. Cummings works off of a screen. Mail. Good luck. Big basket for Jason Mail. That's a three. You know when he gets set like that, that he's going to have an awfully good look, and that time, very nicely run the play by Pitt. There. In and out. And Varga with a strong rebound, and a tie up will be called. Possession pitch. Panther Faithful wanted a foul. They do not get it. Possession will go to the Panthers when we return. And officials time out. 3.31 remains. Pitt trying to hold off the Pirates. Ford F-Series with the world's only standard third door. And available new 5.4 liter Triton V8 for even more torque and horsepower. Now you got all your holes dug, huh? <laughs> the new Ford F-Series, built Ford tough. Everyone loves to shoot the basketball, but there's only one right way. That's why former NBA All-Star and NCAA coach Jeff Mullins is introducing the right way basketball, the ball with a built-in coach. For the first time ever, you can own this complete 10-step shooting program. It includes a durable patented basketball, the Jeff Mullins Secrets of Shooting video, and a 10-step shooting poster, all for only $34.95. No young player or coach should be without a right way basketball. So why wait? Just call 1-800-425-0811 to order yours today. a thief who witnessed a murder. One man knows the truth. He's a burglar. Who's gonna believe him? One man holds the key. You know who did it, don't you? So will you. The most powerful man in the world has just met his match. 
You'll make a mistake. Then what? Then I kill him. Clint Eastwood. That's entirely unacceptable. Absolute power. Rated R. Opens everywhere Friday. Pitt fans booing during the entire timeout, and here is why. A tussle for the ball over the baseline. Yep. It was called a tie-up, and uh, Dwayne Jordan was not issued a personal foul. The Panther fans wanted one, and so did that guy right there. Well, I'll tell you, when he first had the ball, there might have been an over the back, but as it, as it continued, there was a lot of leather. Generally, when a guy is behind like that, he will get rung up for the foul, though. Pressure by Seton Hall. Here's Kelly Taylor with a three. Vargo rebounds, but over the back was Kokanis. Yeah, this is the same kind of play where Kokanis is behind Chad Varga right there committing the foul. Some similarities to the replay that we showed at the other end, but there's the foul. Varga steps up to shoot two. Oh, that ball just danced out of there, didn't it? Look at him. Man, what do I have to do to get this thing to go down? Panthers just 13 of 29 at the free throw line. And there's been a lot of foul shooting going on. 42 fouls between the two teams called here this afternoon. Six point game as we approach the three minute mark. Two possessions if you can get a couple of threes to go. Sanders and Holloway have really been quiet here the last five or six minutes. Because Sanders is on fire. No one's going to keep that pace up. Kane has wanted it in the corner. Inside, Danelle Williams cannot get it to fall. And the ball will belong to Pittsburgh with 2.45 remaining on the clock. That was a big miss right there for Seton Hall. Chance to make it a four-point game. They come up empty. Now Pitt will try to expand on its lead. Open court steal nearly by LeVar, uh, Lavelle Sanders. He had the initial touch of the ball, but when he went to reach around, there was contact, and he commits his third. Well, when you play catch-up basketball, you really, at crucial times, you've got to play that flawless kind of game. You've got to convert the baskets. You've got to make the steals. And right now, the pressure on Seton Hall because they've been playing catch-up ball today. Montego Cummings has been very quiet because of foul problems here in the second half. Nine of his 11 points were scored in the opening half of play. This is the roll that Chad Varga didn't get on the last trip. Ralph Willard up and at him. Both coaches really been working it in this game. Change of defenses. Two big free throws for Montego Cummings. Takes the pit lead out to eight with two minutes, 35 seconds remaining. Chance for Pitt to even up their Big East record at six and six. Seton Hall has got to make their move now. They've got to start hitting a couple of those threes if they want to pull this thing out. LaBelle Sanders does not have the stroke that time. Another rebound for Gerald Jordan. Not a lot of second chances for Seton Hall today. Well, check nice this one. Great block inside by Dwayne Jordan. And a foul out front will be called against Kokanis and George Blaney very upset with his player for reaching in there on the open floor. Well, he knows, George Blaney does, that Seton Hall probably has one more chance to get a stop and then go down and score. The shot clock was still ticking away because that ball had never hit the rim, and I think that was George Blaney's reaction. I was a kid who just made two free throws a minute ago. Miss everything on that one. Nice rejection by Jordan. See, the shot clock keeps ticking because that ball never hits the rim. And then Kokanis with that quick reach in. One out of two for Montego Cummings. And Pittsburgh now with a nine-point lead, nearly matching their largest lead of the game, which was at 10. Danelle Williams strokes it, makes it an eight-point game, and 155 remaining. Cummings with the push for Jordan. And Holloway reaches in to commit the foul. That was a good foul because Jordan going in for the layup on that one. Number three against Shaheen Holloway. Stops the clock with 148 remaining. 
And Gerald Jordan with a double-double this afternoon. 10 points and 15 rebounds for the senior. He's done a great job. Blount picking up two fouls early in the game and then two fouls early in the second half. And let's face it, with the game that Jordan's been playing, Ralph Willard sticking with him here in crunch time. Do a little house cleaning here as Gerald tucks that jersey down into the trunks. Well, with the shorts that the guys play with, there's plenty of room to tuck those shirts into. They're getting longer and longer, Tony. Gerald Jordan comes up very big. He played just eight minutes the other night against Miami. He has seen a great deal of action here this afternoon. and has come up very big. Long three from Donnell Williams. Missed everything. And with 1.39 remaining, Pittsburgh on top by nine. It is their game to win. Now, I don't fault Williams for taking it. You've got to try to make some things happen at this stage. But the key is that Seton Hall has put themselves in this position. Every time they got close, Pitt seemed to be able to have answers to get themselves up by six or seven. Now with a chance to put it away from the charity stripe. The X factor in this one, as you see uh, Remus Kokanis head down the floor, has been Chad Varga. He did not play in that first game because of the stress fracture injury. Without him, they lose out of buzzer beater. This afternoon, Varga comes up with eight points in the first half, nine points in the second half, 17 for the game, and that's quite a difference. Now, he's been big, and I also think we've been talking about the job that Jordan has done in this game has been huge. And on the other side of the coin, Shaheen Holloway, averaging 18 a game. He's been held to five in this game, and he just has not had the good shot opportunities. Give credit to Pitt's defense, the zone, to keep him out away from the basket, only letting him penetrate on a handful of occasions. Jason Mal will have another, getting back to Shaheen Holloway. Just one of eight running from the field this afternoon for Shaheen Holloway. Yeah, not a lot of opportunities, but the, the thing I think he does best is penetrate. And I thought that was the job that Pitt did, not allowing him inside that key area that frequently. Here he goes. Trying to scoop it around to Dwayne Jordan. Jordan's foot over the end line, and Pittsburgh will take the ball back up 10 with 1.27 remaining. See, that's what Holloway does real well. Not a lot of chances to do that. And guys have got to start catching and converting for him there. That was a terrific pass that time that wasn't handled. A big reason why is Pittsburgh's defense, Ron. I mean, the Panthers, one of the best defensive teams in the Big East. They never allowed Shaheen Holloway really to get into his game this afternoon. Exactly. Anya Blonsky picks up the foul, stops the clock with 1.11 to go. Blonsky, senior out of Linden, New Jersey. So a victory here this afternoon will give Pitt 12 wins on the season. Takes them over the 500 mark. They came in at 11 and 11. Also, will even up their Big East Conference record at 6 and 6. So despite foul problems, Montego Cummings has come here in the late going and has done a nice job at the free throw line as Gerald Jordan reaches over and commits the foul. But uh, despite the miss that time by Montego Cummings, probably won't uh, matter into the outcome of this one. It's an 11-point game with 1.10 to go. Good balance by Pitt in this game, but I think the guy that we'd like to give the game ball to, Tony, Ford player of the game. Right there, six foot, 11 inches tall, 250 pounds senior from Philadelphia, Gerald Jordan. Did not play in that first meeting with uh, Seton Hall. He's another guy. He and Varga both missed the first game. And you take a look at their numbers this afternoon, and uh, they have been the difference in giving Pitt a 10 point lead now with 110 to go. Seton Hall's been trying to put some good play, plays together in bunches. It's just been kind of a struggle for them to maintain that consistency in this game, and they're scrapping now with full court pressure. Sanders reaches in on Jason Mayo, and we'll go back to the free throw line with 102 remaining. And time now to say hello to our Ford player of the game from the University of Pittsburgh, Gerald Jordan, with a double-double this afternoon. 15 rebounds, 12 points. He really established himself in the opening half of this game, came in early because of foul problems for Mark Blount and immediately took a hold on the offensive glass. He had nine boards, uh, seven in the first half on the offensive glass, uh, and it tells the story. Yeah, we thought the rebounding would be important, and when Blount goes out early, 
Seemed like it could be an opportunity for Seton Hall, but in steps Gerald Jordan and really solidifies things down low for Ralph Willard and the Panthers and puts up some bonus points as well. Nice double-double. See Andre Howard come in. Chad Varga has gone to the bench. He's cut his hand, and so they're working on that over on the sideline. And Jason Mail knocks down the free throw. Good balance, two by Pitt today. Double figures for Cummings, Mail, Gerald Jordan, Chad Varga. So they've really kind of spread it out very nicely today. 14 points for Jason Mail inside of a minute to go. Shaheen, nice hand switch. He went from right to left just like that. But it's going to be a situation of too little, too late, most likely. It's a nine-point game with 56 seconds remaining. Stay with us. We'll be back for the final minute of action. Today's Big East telecast is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by K Jewelers. Valentine's Day is February the 14th. Shop K Jewelers to find a spectacular selection of diamonds, colored gemstones, and 14 karat gold. K Jewelers presents a Valentine's Day shopping tip from Cindy Crawford. I'd like to fill you in on a little Valentine's Day secret. At heart, every woman is a hopeless romantic. So don't be afraid to show her that you can be romantic too. With a beautiful gift of diamonds from K Jewelers. This Valentine's Day, our incredible diamond selection includes beautiful quarter carat diamond earrings, tennis bracelet, and heart pendant for only $99.95 each. Let K Jewelers make your Valentine a little more beautiful too. From the people who brought you one clever idea after another comes the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Right now, you can get a Plymouth Voyager Plus, this great limited time lease offer for only $2.49 a month. You get air conditioning, seven passenger seating, and more. And you get it for only $2.49 a month. Don't miss the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale, another clever way to save. And it's only at your Plymouth dealer. 56 seconds remain. The Pitt Panthers on top 74-65. Big East basketball action continues next weekend. We invite you to join us on Creative Sports. Red Storm of St. John's taking on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. That'll be a noontime start. And then on next Sunday, Scooney Pan of the BC Eagles playing host to the same Seton Hall Pirates. That game tips off at 2 o'clock. And check your local listings for the outlet in your area. Holloway with nine threes in the first meeting against Boston College. Oh, nice lead pass. Time of the game right now where the players like to hold on to the ball just to get fouled to get some points. And that's what <laughs> Kelly Taylor will do. That to foul right there, our 50th of the contest. A few reach-ins today for sure. George Blaney looking on and in a tough stretch right now for Seton Hall. They came in, loses of five of their last six. They've had some shooting problems, and today hung very tough on the road against Pitt. One of the big keys is Holloway. Having a quiet day in single digits, not a very common occurrence at all. He averages 18 a game. And also, I think inside, another key was the rebounding effort by Pitt. 23 out of 43. That's the story from the free throw line here this afternoon for the Panthers. Yet it uh, will not be a detriment for them as far as the game's outcome goes. Kelly Taylor uh, makes the second free throw now with 10 points. So five Panthers with double figures and another steal for the Big East leader in steals, Kelly Taylor. John Yablonski makes contact there with Chad Varga. And Chad will step up to shoot two. Varga really came up big as well. First half helping Pitt to get the lead and also in the second half he's playing in some pain with the stress fracture. I mean you really don't have that healed all the way unless you rest it and we've Taking a look a couple of times at his wife and son. He's already got the little one stuck. You see the little yeah. one? Cameron's got the basketball in his hand already. He's ready to hoop it up. Working on the drills, though. The, <laughs> the hand coordination, the hand eye over on the bench. Nice. His dad knocks down a pair of free throws. Now 19 points for Chad Varga. Danell Williams straight away got a bomb. He hits it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's out the rain in here, Tony. 18 for Danell Williams and the. Pirates keep on fouling, 77-68, nine-point Panther advantage with 23 seconds to play. Seton Hall just did not get much scoring inside today. They own Katie with four and Dwayne Jordan with six. And you know, if you're going to win in this league, you've got to get some inside-out balance. And it just has not been there today for the Hall. 
George Blaney and knows it uh, full well that uh, in order to be competitive in this league, he's going to have to get some front line players that can consistently put some points on the board. He's got the backcourt combination. They're going to be together for at least another year with Sanders just being a junior and Holloway, a freshman. If he gets someone down inside that can catch that basketball and score, it's going to be a, a very good basketball team. There's no question about it, especially with the anchor that they've got already in the backcourt with Holloway and, as you mentioned, with Sanders. Nice production on the other hand for Pitt today. They've struggled in some games inside, but not today with Varga getting it done. Oh, there's a jump shot by Holloway. Too late for Shaheen as he hits just his first three-pointer of the game. Holloway with 10 points. He makes it a seven-point game with 14 seconds to go. George Blaney says, you know what? I'm not done coaching yet. Stranger things have happened. Down seven, 14 ticks on the clock. The way Pitt's been shooting foul shots, you never know. Now you got to stay with it all the way till that final.